Elvis Presley was one of the first pop and rock music icons. I'm talking about a global phenomenon, the sort of attention and success only matched by the Beatles shortly after. Elvis was consistently sitting on the number one spot with every release, and his records were simply dominating sales. Only a few artists would ever come close to touching that sort of attention and success. And when they did, Elvis had a history of feeling threatened, a fear of being dethroned. This very thing happened with the Beatles in the 60s. Elvis, despite inspiring John Lennon to create music in the first place, had a less than ideal relationship with them. It even led to Elvis calling them a force for anti-American ideals and he wanted John Lennon banned from America. I have a whole video about Elvis and the Beatles on this channel, you can click up there in the corner to watch it and I'll link it at the end of the video as well. So you'd think that Led Zeppelin taking the torch from the Beatles at the beginning of the 70s would face a similar experience with the King, but it didn't work out like that. By the time they first met in 1974, Robert Plant had become one of the most well-known vocalists in music. His howling, animalistic style of performance, along with Led Zeppelin's heavy driving sound, really resonated with audiences at that time. As the 60s psychedelic era came to a close, a more aggressive, action-led 70s kicked in. The Vietnam War was entering its final stages, the Cold War was ramping up, and the oil crisis shook the Western world. This was a period of political unrest, a period marked by people no longer asking, but demanding for change. Led Zeppelin's hard rock reflected this aggression, this hunger for change. That's why Led Zeppelin was so successful in the 70s, they truly captured the minds of their audience. At the same time, Elvis was on the decline. By 1974, he was barely making it to the top 10 in the charts. He was well aware his peak had come and gone. According to author Stephen Davis, Elvis would tell his entourage, Well, I may not be Led Zeppelin, but I can still pack him in. This signalled a much more accepting outlook than with the Beatles. With the Beatles, he was still in the race, he was still vying for the top spot, but with Led Zeppelin, it was clear that they were on the rise and about to dethrone the king and he was okay with that, in fact he respected that. There's some really great famous audio of Elvis performing live in 1974 in LA, and Led Zeppelin are in the audience watching. Elvis and his band begin playing Funny How Time Slips Away, but they make a mistake. Elvis demands they restart just because Led Zeppelin are in the building and watching the performance. Have a listen. Well, hello there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> If we could start together for a little bit, because we got Led Zeppelin out there, and Jimmy Darren, and a uh, whole bunch of people, and let's try to look like we know what we're doing. What are we doing? Now, what are we doing? Well, hello there. Mine has been a long, long time. So there's the first surprising thing about Led Zeppelin meeting Elvis, the fact that Elvis respected Led Zeppelin much more than the Beatles a few years before. Now, the next surprise comes when the band actually met Elvis in person for the first time after that show in LA in 1974. Despite the enthusiasm Elvis showed towards Led Zeppelin while on stage at the Inglewood Forum, meeting in person for the first time was a different story. The atmosphere was horrendously awkward. A Rolling Stone journalist, Cameron Crowe, who was there at the time, described it like this. For the first few minutes, Elvis ignored Led Zeppelin. The room was filled with an awkward silence. Jimmy Page began to fidget. What was going on? Did Elvis really want to meet them? Was this a big misunderstanding? If you have already watched my video of when the Beatles met Elvis, you'll know that it was starting to look exactly like the same situation. Not what Led Zeppelin were hoping for. But eventually, Elvis asked the first question, and it was nothing to do with their music. It was all to do with their naughty, naughty debauchery on the road. Tell me, asked Elvis, is it true, these stories about you boys on the road? From there, the evening became less awkward and even hilarious, as described by those in attendance. Robert Plant remembers, Our manager, Peter Grant, who weighed about 360 pounds at the time, walked in and sat down, but not looking properly, and he ended up sitting on Elvis's dad's lap, which was hilarious because he nearly broke Vernon's legs. Another surprise on that day was that Robert Plant and Elvis would perform a spontaneous duet. Plant mentioned how he loved to sing Elvis's songs when warming up. 
especially Love Me. And on leaving the hotel room, Elvis calls me back and he sang it to me down the corridor. He sang the first bit and there's me singing the answers to him. It was great. As well as this, Elvis told the boys how much he loved Stairway to Heaven and, perhaps the most surprising thing of all, he asked for their autographs. Okay, the autographs weren't for him, they were for his daughter Lisa, but still I bet Led Zeppelin were not expecting that. Another surprising fact is that this meeting lasted two hours, rather than the usual ten minutes that Elvis had with other artists, because Elvis was just having such a grand time with the Led Zepp boys. The second meeting, not long after the first, took place in Memphis, in Elvis's home. And this one was full of surprises too. They were there for two days, and according to Michael Francis, part of Led Zeppelin's security, the most memorable thing about the visit was the sheer amount of gifts that Elvis insisted on giving. All he ever did during those two days we were there was give people presents, like watches, robes, and jewelry. By the end of the visit, Elvis had run out of presents to give, but he had one more surprising thing in mind for John Bonham. Jerry Schilling, part of Elvis's entourage, describes the moment. So he stood, eyed John Bonham, and said, let's swap pants, while simultaneously, in expert Python fashion, letting his pajama bottoms drop beneath his robe. Nobody accepted Elvis's offer, but it was a great note to end the night on. Perhaps the most surprising thing about this encounter is when they met Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker. They discovered he was a bit shady, to say the least. When Parker died, he apparently owed $20 million to casinos across America, and all of Elvis's movie deals were done to pay off those debts. And there was even a rumour that this guy killed a woman in Holland and was terrified to leave America because of it. The third and final meeting between Led Zeppelin and Elvis was also a surprise because the whole thing was totally unplanned. It took place completely by chance on the tarmac at the Baltimore Washington Airport in 1977, the year Elvis Presley would pass away. This particular meeting is documented by David Stanley, Elvis's brother-in-law and part of his entourage. It was at the Washington Baltimore Airport. We, the Presley Tour, were playing in Washington and Led Zeppelin was playing at the Capitol Center, he said. Now of course, both being the gods of music that they were, they were using private jets to get around the United States for their tour. And David remembers the brilliant sight of the two private jets sat next to each other on the tarmac. The two groups crossed paths briefly on the tarmac, and David was so enamored with Led Zeppelin that he actually asked Elvis if he could go with them to their next show, instead of remaining in Elvis's entourage. He just looked at me and said, no. When I asked him why, he said, look at the bottom of your paycheck. As I entered the limo with Elvis, I said they sure have a nice jet. Elvis leaned over and reminded me, they leased their jet from Caesar's Palace. I own mine. Elvis, of course, passed away later that year and Led Zeppelin would never meet him again. It's lucky their relationship didn't end how it did with the Beatles and Elvis, because Elvis ended up hating them. Click the video here to watch that one next.